Hello everyone, Bashrob here. In this video, I'll explain everything about struggle mechanics. What the best tool for struggles is, what the accessibility struggle setting does and whether it's better to use it or click manually, how the damage from struggles works and whether it's possible to tell if you might die in a struggle or if you're safe. First, I'll cover bear maulings and moose stomps as they are way simpler and more predictable than wolf struggles. When a bear mauls you, you lose 90% of your current condition, while moose stompings lower your current condition by 60%. Note the word current, not maximum. If you're at 100% condition, you drop down to 10%, but if you're at 30%, you still survive with 3% condition. Bears and moose cannot instantly kill you in a struggle, unless your condition is below 10%. In that case, you're 100% guaranteed to die. And as long as you're at 11% condition or more, you're guaranteed to survive. This means if you get mauled by a bear or a moose and are low on condition, simply using the stim will protect you from dying in case you get mauled a second time. When you do get mauled, it's good to know that there's a grace period where the animal will ignore you for roughly half a minute, as long as you stay out of its sight. So if you do get mauled, the first thing you should do is to walk or run away from its charging range before this grace period is over. There is no need to sneak. Keep in mind, bears always inflict blood loss and infection risk after a mauling, so even if you can survive an 11% condition mauling, be ready to patch the blood loss to prevent bleeding out. Moose never make you bleed out and never damage your clothing, though they always give you broken ribs. Note that while damage from struggles is reduced by protection from your clothing, you will still die when under 10% condition, even with 100% or more protection. This may or may not be intended, but it's how it currently works, at least for bear and moose struggles. 100% protection still prevents death by wolf struggles, regardless of condition. Still, wolf struggles are usually way more dangerous and more unpredictable than bear or moose struggles. While bears and moose never kill you as long as you stay above 10% condition, there are no guarantees with wolf struggles. You can be at full condition and still lose your run to a single wolf struggle, since wolves continuously deal damage in struggles until you die, scare them, or the struggle takes too long, in which case the player will black out, just like in bear and moose struggles. The condition damage taken in wolf struggles can be split into two parts. The first type is passive damage you continuously take while in the struggle. This type is predictable and consistent. You receive 4% condition damage per second for the entire duration of the struggle, up to 34% damage if the struggle takes the whole 8.5 seconds. The damage is affected by difficulty settings, so on interloper you might lose up to 51% condition. All outer layer clothing also gets damage at a rate of 1 point per second, Though this isn't equal to 1% condition, but instead depends on clothing durability, a wool took will take a lot more damage than a bearskin coat. The other type of damage comes from various afflictions you gain during the struggle. This type of damage is much more random, of course it depends on the affliction you roll, but even damage from any specific affliction is somewhat random. And if you feel that's still not enough RNG, the rate at which you get these afflictions during the struggle is random as well. Most afflictions can only occur a certain number of times per struggle, so even when you're super unlucky, you can draw 10 times blood loss or anything like that. Timberwolves have separate affliction tables from Black Wolves and generally deal a bit less damage than Black Wolf struggles. You're guaranteed to get an affliction right at the start of a struggle, but after that you gain afflictions at irregular intervals between 0.75 and 2 seconds. 
In an absolutely worst case scenario, you could roll a new affliction every 0.75 seconds and gain up to 12 afflictions during a single struggle if the struggle takes full 8.5 seconds. Though such scenario is extremely unlikely to happen. Unlikely enough that probably no TLD player ever had a struggle that bad yet. But that just shows how much RNG there is in struggles and while staying high on condition and fatigue might be enough to prevent death from vast majority of struggles, the only way to be completely sure you can survive a struggle is to have high enough protection that even the worst case scenario is not going to kill you. This is much harder to achieve on higher difficulties where the required protection is so high it can only be reached with the ballistic vest. Of course, how much damage you receive during a wolf struggle is also determined by how fast you can scare the wolf away and that depends on the tool you use. So what is the best tool to use in struggles? First, we need to understand what makes wolves flee from struggles. There are actually three ways to win struggles. One, the wolf will flee once it's low on condition. Each time you hit a wolf in a struggle, you deal some damage. Once the wolf is low on health, it's guaranteed to flee. Two, the wolf is also guaranteed to flee if you manage to fill up the progress bar that appears during the struggle. And the last way is sheer luck. Each time you hit a wolf, there is a small chance it flees, regardless of its condition or the progress bar. Other than these three cases, struggles also always end on hard interrupts such as uh, the wolf bleeding out or dying while in a struggle or when an aurora starts or ends, which always makes wolves flee. All three ways of winning struggles depend on hitting the wolf as quickly as possible. The faster you can mash that button, the better your chances. The alternative to mashing buttons in struggles is to use the press and hold accessibility setting. This locks you in at 8 hits per second. So if you can click faster than that, the setting is not worth it. An average person can click slightly less than 7 times per second, so the press and hold setting will yield better results for most people. But being a very fast clicker can make a huge difference. If you can click at 12 clicks per second, all your struggles will be 50% more effective and that's an immense advantage that can easily mean never dying from struggles. I'm not a huge fan of this mechanic, as an unlucky struggle can mean death even at a 100% condition, and being able to mash a button faster shouldn't be the deciding factor. You can't really choose whether you win a struggle by dealing damage, filling up the progress bar, or by RNG, whichever is the fastest in any given struggle will scare the wolf first. But you can choose the tool you use in struggles. And the tools all deal different damage per hit, fill up the progress bar at different speeds, and have different chance to trigger the RNG flee chance. It's impossible to say which tool is the best for struggles, because there isn't just one. Instead, the question you need to ask is which of these three methods will win the struggle the fastest in your situation, and just use the tool that's the best for that. Hatchets deal the most damage per hit. The damage per hit in struggles is always consistent. It will always take the same number of hits to scare a wolf away, regardless of game difficulty or fatigue. The number of hits varies based on the wolf type though, as some wolves have more HP than others. Dealing damage is usually the fastest way to win a struggle against wolves and poison wolves, but won't be as efficient against timber rolls and aurora walls, as their HP is too high. Knives increase the progress bar the fastest. Struggle progress speed works in the opposite way to dealing damage. It's consistent across all wolf types, but is affected by game difficulty settings and your current fatigue level. So this method is less efficient the higher the difficulty and the lower the fatigue though it can still be viable even on interloper and when exhausted. Struggle progress bar is reduced by 25% every second, so a seemingly small penalty for using a worse tool 
or being exhausted can quickly compound and be overpowered by this reduction. Revolvers are a bit of a special case. They don't seem like they'd be good in struggles, but they are unique in that you only need to fill up 50% of the progress bar and as long as the revolver is loaded, it can be used to shoot the wolf, which always ends the struggle, either by scaring the wolf away or killing it instantly. Since this is still dependent on the progress bar increase, they behave similarly to knives, except even more extreme. They tend to be even better than the knife at high fatigue levels, but even worse at low fatigue levels. Hammers have the highest chance to make the wolf flee by a RNG, while most weapons only have a chance to trigger this chance between 1 and 1.5%, one and the heavy hammer has a 4% chance to trigger it each hit. This is consistent across all wolf types, game difficulty and fatigue, but the downside is that you're never completely guaranteed to trigger this chance. The hammer has almost a 94% chance to scare the wolf away within 8.5 seconds, but that's still not 100%. So hammers typically only improve the average struggle outcome, but they don't protect you against the worst cases. To sum up, the best weapon to use in struggles depends on game difficulty, wolf type and current fatigue. Generally, hatchets are the best at high fatigue, knives at medium fatigue and revolvers at low fatigue, though knives can be substituted for revolvers if you can spare the ammo. Hammers are pretty much never the best, with the exception of Stalker or a Timberwolves while exhausted. Note that this is only the case on Stalker and not on Interloper, because it's harder to fill up the progress bar on Stalker than it is on Interloper. This is likely a bug though, as in custom games it's the other way around. Hatchets, knives and revolvers are normally unavailable on Interloper though, where the best choice for dealing damage and filling up the progress bar is the improvised hatchet. And the only other good tool for struggles is once again the heavy hammer, which sometimes offers better average struggle outcome than the improvised hatchet. But it's up to you to decide which is more important to you, the average struggle success or preventing the worst case scenario. That's all for now, thank you for watching.